Hi guys, my name is Nicolette Mashile. I am also known as the Financial Bunny. Welcome to the Financial Bunny TV. Today we're talking all things retirement. Really exciting because one of the things that we cannot run away from unless there's an untimely death is retirement years. And to be quite honest, retirement years are supposed to be the most fun years of your entire life, which is why whenever I have financial coaching with my clients, I always talk about the importance of writing retirement and how you would like to retire as a financial goal, because that's ultimately what it actually is and what it should look like. But remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you are looking for financial advice, please speak to somebody who is certified and registered with the FSCA. So let's talk a little bit about what retirement is supposed to look like. For most of us, we've grown up seeing our parents either moving in into our homes, taking care of our children, assisting around the house, or perhaps maybe they're still living in the homesteads and everything is rosy, but they're aging quicker because they don't really have many activities that they can do. But sometimes it's because they do not have the money to do those things. Now, I have a parent currently who is in retirement and every single day I'm watching him doing all these things. My dad has, obviously he's got a consultancy. He's an engineer by profession, an excellent one at that. So if you are looking for an engineer, hit me up because my dad is really good. But one of the things my dad... Um, or that I'm seeing about my dad is even though he is in retirement, he is still working. There was a day when he called me to say he's driving from Bushbrook Ridge to Bloemfontein. And I knew for a fact that it, it, it wasn't just for leisure. It must be work. And I'm stressed because I'm like, why is my parent working in retirement? Either it's because he really enjoys what he does or either it's because he actually really needs to do it because my dad still has minor children. So it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, why was his retirement money that was given to him not enough? This man has been working for as long as I have known him. In actual fact, one of the things that we always talk about and we admire about him, but it is actually traumatic, um, also because as black children, we have a lot of traumatic experiences that we see as, no, this had to happen this way because we needed to make money. We needed to take it to a good school. We needed to put food on the table. However, it's quite traumatic. And one of my traumatic experiences with my dad is that we would go to sleep and he would not be home yet. And when we wake up in the morning, he would be gone already because he was going to sites. Um, he was balancing being an engineer, also being a politician, you know, working for the ANC. So it was really a traumatic experience. And as I said, I've seen this man work years and years and years of my life. And all of a sudden, again, in his retirement years where he should be retiring, should be chilling, this man is still on the job and he's still working hard. And that is very stressful for me. So I'm asking myself the question, where is this retirement money? And that is why I always say, you do not need a retirement fund. You need funds in retirement. And this is not to say that your retirement annuities, your pension funds, your um, uh, provident funds are not good enough. They are good enough. They're just not enough. And that's the reality, you know, that's the reality of life. And, and to be quite honest, most of our parents don't really know how much money they are supposed to receive in retirement. Because a lot of us, what we do is we only start to look at our retirement funds when we're getting closer and closer to retirement. So if I'm going to do anything today, I'm going to ask you and appeal to you and beg you to please walk, especially if you have a, a, an employer-funded retirement fund, Please go to HR today. Have a conversation with the guys at HR and ask them, am I contributing enough for the type of retirement that I want? But the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you actually sit down and calculate how much money are you going to need in retirement. Remember, one of the biggest things that we've got to keep at the back of our minds is fact number one. You do not pay or you contribute towards your retirement fund with the money that is not taxed yet. In other words, before your money gets taxed, the retirement contribution goes to your retirement fund, which means that that money that you are contributing to your retirement fund is not taxed, which means that when you do get to retirement years, that money is going to get taxed. So you're going to pay tax on that money. Of course, there is a rule that says the first 500,000 is not taxed. But what is 500,000? And I want you to think about 500,000 in the years when you are actually going to retire, things are so expensive. You can't even buy a decent house with 500000 
So that money is the money that's not going to be taxed. And remember also, the law says one third of your money is what you can uh, 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 re uh, withdraw. The two thirds need to be annuitized. So in other words, you've got to buy an annuity, whether it is a life annuity, or, I mean, it's a, yes, a life annuity or a living annuity. You've got to buy an annuity with the rest of that money so that they give you certain amounts of money every single month. This is simply a good policy, if you ask me, to be able to take care of our people when they're in retirement. Because one of the other things that we've seen is that people are not dying. People are not dying when the financial institution predicted they would die. So people are living far longer. <laughs> Guys, it's scary. It's scary because we don't have enough money when we reach retirement. Some of us don't even know how much money is going to be given to us in retirement. Some of us are so dependent on our employer to plan retirement for us. So I want you today, as I said, step number one is calculate how much money do you think you're going to need in retirement, remembering that you're going to pay tax in retirement. And if you're going to have children later, for instance, a person like me, I'm going to have children far later in my life. So let's say I'm going to have children in the next three, four, five years. That means I'm having children either in my mid-30s or my late 30s. So by the time my child reaches the age of 20, I'm essentially saying that that child is going to reach 20 when I am going and approaching my retirement years. That child might still be financially dependent on me. Will I have enough money for Nicolette? plus my child. I think a lot of us don't think about this. The second thing is a lot of us get home loans later in life. So if you're getting your home loan post 35, your first home loan, and you take it over 20 years and you plan to only pay it over the 20 years, it means that you may be taking a home loan into your retirement years. Have you thought about that? Some of us don't take care of our health. We don't gym, we don't exercise, we don't eat healthy. So in other words, we are building and harboring diseases that might pop up in our retirement years. Do we have enough money for those years? Do we have enough money to pay a medical aid? Do we have enough money to pay for medical services when we are in retirement? That's the question. Some of us, in other words, who are going and making kids everywhere. When you're calculating your retirement, when you're talking to your financial advisor, you only account for the kids that are in your house or in your marriage. You forget that you've got kids outside. Then those kids pop up in your retirement years and they need you to assist them. Now you're going up and down the court and you're explaining, oh my goodness, I don't have enough money. You don't have enough money for your kids. So it's important to calculate now how much money you're going to need in retirement so that you can start planning it for it now. And paper assets, I can assure you, are never going to be enough, considering the fact that you don't know what the market is going to do in the next couple of years. So first step you've got to do today is calculate how much money you're going to need in retirement, the type of retirement that you want. Do you want a retirement where you still have a brand new, a nice car? Do you want a retirement where you're moving into a beach house, a holiday home? Do you want a retirement where you're traveling? Do you want a retirement where you can give your kids um, a financial assistance? What type of retirement are you looking for? That's step number one. Step number two, you go to your, your HR and you have a conversation and you say, can you show me what my, my retirement portfolio actually looks like as it stands today? Am I contributing enough? Because remember, the employer contributes, you contribute. Generally, it's, when you put it together, it's 15%. You've got up to 27.5% that you can contribute of your, non, your taxable amount, which is money that you're going to contribute non-taxed. 27.5%, which means that there may still be room for you to contribute what we call voluntary contributions. Now, I know a lot of people, what they do is then they try to supplement it with a retirement annuity or something like that. Why are you going to go get an outside retirement annuity where you are going to be paying extra amounts of money for fees and account administration and all sorts of things when your employer has already paid for those things? So I, what I'm saying to you is there's no need for you to really go out and supplement your retirement fund by getting an additional retirement annuity. Rather supplement it with a different asset and a different asset class and a different fund altogether. Not retirement. Because your employer has already absorbed all those fees, all the management fees, all the account fees. If you really are saying, you know what, Nicolette, I want to pay into a retirement, I want to do voluntary, then do voluntary contributions into the existing uh, uh, pension fund. Then a lot of people say, yeah, but what happens if I leave this job? 
if you leave this job, you transfer that retirement fund or pension fund or whatever it's called to, it's actually a pension fund because it's a, a, an employer. So you just transfer it to your next employer. If you're not going to go back to work, you take that thing, you put it into a preservation fund, and then you restart another retirement annuity if that's what you want to do. Right? Or, as I said, you can pay and buy other asset classes that are going to assist you. For instance, I'm not keeping my, my, my properties for health. I know for a fact that I could take my property money and put it into another asset and it would double up my returns faster than property will ever do. But I have to keep my properties for my retirement. I don't want to stress about retirement and I don't want to have to put money into paper assets for retirement. I'd, la- I'd rather put money into an asset class that I've got some level of control. Obviously, I don't have any control when it comes to the property market because I don't know what the property market is going to do in the next 20 years. However, I know that the money that I'm receiving now is rent. I can put into something else. So essentially, I'm keeping the asset as property for my retirement and I'm taking the current returns that I'm receiving now as income and putting it into another asset class just so I can take care of my retirement years. You've got to start thinking about those things. It's important to think about these things. And remember I said, you don't need a retirement fund. You need it as part of your asset allocation for your retirement as a goal. However, the other thing that I always tell people to do because it will give you a mind-boggling picture of whether or not you're contributing the right amount of money to your retirement is to use the Sunland Retirement Calculator. Now, of course, um, this is the one that is easy for me to use. I like it. Um, so essentially what you need to do, it's called the, re- the Retirement and Future Value Calculator. So it will calculate your future value of the money that you're putting away today when you reach retirement. And what you need to do is there's personal details that you need to put in there. There's your pre-tax income that you need to put in there and then your existing retirement savings. So it takes all of those things. It's an algorithm, obviously, that works out the numbers and tells you exactly how much money you're going to get so let's say we're doing the retirement calculator on the Sunlum app, right? Or the Sunlum website. It's called the Retirement and Future Value Calculator. So this helps you to figure out if you are saving enough to achieve your future retirement goals. My retirement goal is to earn 75% of 40,000 in my retirement year. So I need to earn 30,000 rand, right? Every single month. Remember that 30,000 rand is still subject to tax because your contributions towards retirement are not taxed. So it is you contribute towards your retirement pre-tax. Generally, what happens is that your employer, if you are using an employer pension fund, your employer is going to contribute a percentage, you're going to contribute a percentage, and together that percentage is the total that you guys contribute to your pension fund. So let's say, for instance, b- between you and your employer, you're contributing 15%. Now, 15% of 40,000 is 6,000 rand, right? So you will see that uh, monthly payment is 6,000 rand. This is my desired amount of money, which is the 30,000. 40,000 is what I am getting pre-tax per month, right? So then let's calculate it, right? I'm a female. I still have 23 years to be able to retire because I'm 32 years old. I want to retire at 55. So I need to save an additional 19,000 rand per month to get 30,000. An additional 19,000 rand a month. That's essentially how much I need um, to in, uh, increasing yearly with inflation to provide you with the income of 30,000 per month pre-tax, right? So this is, this is quite scary, guys, because if you start to look at this, a lot of us are not actually contributing enough for the desired amount of money that we need. Then people say, why do you need 30,000 rand in, ta- in retirement? And it speaks to those things that I mentioned earlier on in the video, things like you may still have a home loan, you may still have medical issues, you may still have children that are dependent on you, but also maybe you've got a, 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 finan- a retirement goal of traveling, being able to pay for certain things for your kids and Remember, this is still going to get taxed. Very, very important for you to remember this, right? Let's change this and make it male so that you can see the difference with how the financial sector sees females versus males. Now, with a male, same age, same monthly income, same desired monthly retirement income, same monthly payments, same value of current savings, this person can uh, still also has 23 years, but can uh, needs to have an additional 15,000 rand per month, 15,800. 
Female, 19,000. Male, 15,000. And this is, again, is the longevity of life that the financial institutions see when it comes to males and females, right? Now, what I would say to a lot of people is instead of struggling to make... So what you could do here is you could make voluntary contributions, right? Remember, you've got 27.5% allowable... Um, 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 get, uh, an allowable 27.5% of your pre-tax amount of money that you can contribute. So let's say we increase this and you contribute 8,000 rand. I mean, to be quite honest, uh, contributing to retirement is sometimes a grudge pay for a lot of people. So let's, let's say you, you increase that by 2,000. So you make 2,000 as your voluntary uh, 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 um, contributions and we change this back to female. Now you've got an additional 17,000, but you can cover the 17,000 again by what I've said. You don't need retirement fund. You need, re- you need funds in retirement. So this 17,000 can be planned. Let's say, for instance, you decide you're going to try by all means to get two investment properties between now and retirement. So you've got 23 years to get yourself two re- uh, investment properties. Those investment properties, you're hoping that the rent is at least 9,000 for each. That means that you are averaging 18. 18,000 uh, rand on those. And that's now. So you can imagine what the re- rental will be when you get to your retirement years in 23 years' time. Your rental may have escalated by even you could be collecting a rental of 15,000 on each of those, which means that it now becomes 30,000. So you must always look at today's value in future value so that you can plan well for your retirement. And currently, the stats are saying that only 6% of South Africans can get to Uh, 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 earning that amount of money. Only 6% of South Africans can earn 75% of their current income in their retirement years when they have stopped working. Are you one of that 6%? Can you change so that you become one of that 6%? Definitely. And that's by ensuring that you are contributing the right amount of money for the type of money you want to earn when you are in retirement, but also mixing it up with other asset classes so that you don't sit dependent on a pension fund or a retirement fund to pay you out in retirement. You may have a business, you may have some properties, you may have a shares portfolio. So you've got to start thinking about these things. Oh, by the way, guys, my children's money or financial literacy book is out. Um, you can order it on pre-orders at www.cocomoneybunny.com and it will teach children about ways to earn money, spending money wisely, saving your money for later use, growing our money by investing and sharing our money. Join me, Coco, the money bunny, on my journey to learn about what money is and the best way to make my money work for me. Together, we will learn about the power of earning, spending wisely, saving for a goal, and why time is so powerful for investing. But most importantly, spreading love and cheer through sharing our money has been an eye-opening video for you. Let's see you guys on the next one. I love you guys.